Arrgh, matey, I have arrived at the jungle. Oh, I could just smell the fresh air. Arrgh, it feels so good. Oh, a tiger. Oh, tiger. Oh. Arrgh, waiting for the tiger. Waiting for the tiger. Okay. Tiger's good. Okay, okay. Tiger's gone. So yes, laddie, continue on this adventure as Kevin Folk and 22 Tiger Dude will now be reviewing Dead Man's Chest. And uh, please excuse me as I go find something to eat and then I better get the hell out of this jungle because I really don't want to be in this jungle for that long. So continue the journey of these pirates reviews. Arr, arr. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm going to be here to review Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest to continue on the Pirates of the Caribbean review series that I am doing with Kevin Falk. And Kevin Falk, he will be giving you his review, but before he gives his review, I'm going to be giving my review of Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. We did review Curse of the Black Pearl over on Kevin's channel, so if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description down below below but now we're here on my channel to talk about the second installment so part of the caribbean dead man's chest is directed by gore verbinski who also directed the curse of the black pearl and of course the film does star johnny depp orlando bloom kira knightley and bill nye so part of the caribbean dead man's chest is about when will and elizabeth are about to get married until they are interrupted by lord cutler beckett who does have arrest warrants because of Will and Elizabeth letting Jack Sparrow escape execution from the end of the Black Pearl. So now Elizabeth is imprisoned and Will must save Elizabeth and the only way Will is going to be able to save Elizabeth is if he reunites with Captain Jack Sparrow because Captain Jack Sparrow has the compass and when Will does reunite with Jack, Jack is willing to give Will the compass if Will helps Jack find the key to the dead man's chest. So parts of the Caribbean dead man's chest I have to say is awesome. I had a total blast with this movie. Now of course it's not as good as the first film but you know I wasn't ever expecting this film to be as good. I just wanted to be really good. When I saw this movie in theaters, I really liked it. And still to this day, I still really enjoy the heck out of this movie. This movie is so much fun. It is definitely what I want from a Pirates of the Caribbean sequel. Johnny Depp is still fantastic as Jack Sparrow. He really does embrace this character so much and he continues to do a good job of being this character that likes to outsmart everyone else and act all drunk. You know, he's just very good at playing this kind of character and he does add good comedic timing and Johnny Depp just brings so much energy and I just have the biggest smile on my face when I see Jack Sparrow. Orlando Bloom also does continue to be great as Will, and I did really like how the movie focused on this Will character, especially when it does have a certain connection to when we are in the Davy Jones part of the movie, and I don't want to really spoil anything, but I did really like where the film went there. Kira Knightley is really great as Elizabeth. It's amazing how much this character has really progressed. In the first film, she was a damsel in distress, but she was a badass damsel in distress. She was very independent. And in this film, that continues. She's a damsel in distress once again, but then she becomes a pirate lord. And that was an interesting turn for this film. Bill Nye as Davy Jones is awesome. Jeffrey Rush killed it as Barbosa in the original film. He was a threatening villain. He was very believable. And that same thing goes to Davy Jones. You do not want to go near this guy. And my goodness, the special effects on Bill Nye as his character is just superb. Seriously, this guy looks terrific. And the character himself is just another great villain to the parts of the Caribbean franchise. Just another memorable 
menacing, believable villain. I love the screen time that this guy has in Dead Man's Chest. Jack Davenport continues to do a very good job as the Commodore. I didn't mention the Commodore in my review for The Curse of the Black Pearl, but in The Curse of the Black Pearl, I did find him to be an interesting character, and interesting to see how much this character has changed from the original film. In the original film, he wanted to marry Elizabeth because he has a love for Elizabeth, and he was after Jack Sparrow. Now in this film, he is off as this Navy officer. He no longer has this job, and now he's serving for Captain Jack Sparrow. He's now one of the crew members, so to see him go from being after Jack Sparrow in the first to now serving for Jack Sparrow, I actually thought that was very interesting to see. And I thought Jack Davenport and The Curse of the Black Pearl and in Dead Man's Chest, he does do a very good job. Kevin Mignoli is also really good as Mr. Gibbs. I've always loved this Mr. Gibbs character, so I thought he did a really good job. Honestly, everyone does a really good job here, including Naomi Harris as this voodoo witch, and she's barely in this film, and I don't necessarily care for the character. I'll go out and say that is one of my flaws of this film. I didn't necessarily care for the exposition scene with that voodoo witch. Uh, but Naomi Harris does do a good job for the material she's given. The storyline I did find to be just very interesting. Will and Elizabeth's storyline I did find to be interesting. Although Will and Elizabeth, they are apart for a while. So you don't really see as much of their storyline as you did in the first film. But by the second half, when you do see more, when you do see more screen time between Will and Elizabeth, their storyline was very interesting. And like I said, um, I just find their romance to be very believable. You could tell that these two really do care for each other. And they're willing to do anything for each other. I honestly think they're one of the strongest movie couples. I just love Will and Elizabeth because you could tell that... They're just willing to do anything through the good and bad. They're just willing to go out there and sacrifice themselves for each other. And that's that's credit them, honestly. And I do think that the other storylines are really cool. Like, I did really like the storyline with the Flying Dutchman and what we see on the ship with Davy Jones. And without spoiling anything, I did find most of that stuff to honestly be very compelling. And I also did like the storyline regarding the Kraken. That's the thing I definitely loved about the film. And then, of course, the journey to finding the dead man's chest. There are a lot of plots, really, when I look at it in this film, but it doesn't feel really convoluted. It does feel like they do balance out this thing, these things well. There's even a little plot in the first hour of the film where... Jack Sparrow, he's like the leader of the tribe. That had me laughing, definitely. I really like that little plot. And of course, it's gonna be a cliche for me to say this, but I just can't praise Gore Verbinski enough. He knows how to direct this franchise. The direction of this film is just as beautiful as his direction and the original film. The action sequences especially, they give you the same amount of thrills that the original brings. There is a sword fighting sequence that I think everyone is definitely aware about. That entire sequence was just incredible from the choreography how it was just planned and not to mention it was hilarious too it had me at the edge of my seat but it had me laughing at the exact same time with the many amazing action sequences that dead man's chest definitely delivers because of gore verbinski's amazing direction my favorite is by far the climax. There is this one Kraken action sequence in the middle portion of the movie that I thought was amazing, but the climax, when we get to see the Kraken again, it had me at the edge of my seat. I literally had the chills for that entire climax with the Kraken, and I might have loved it just a little bit more than the climax in The Curse of the Black Pearl, to be honest, just because the climax in Dead Man's Chest is more epic. There's a more bigger skill to it. The sound editing, when you see the Kraken just wreck the ship and throwing the crewmates out, that was 
just incredible to me. That's definitely my favorite part of Dead Man's Chest. And that's saying something because there's a lot to really like and admire about Dead Man's Chest, but that climax definitely hits it out of the park. And the ending without spoiling anything, bravo. Just bravo. That's how you end a sequel. And the score too, you know, other than the just the usual dun 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 dun, dun, dun just the score throughout the film, whether it's epic or even a little more emotional, it's very well placed. It fits for every scene that happens. And yeah, the more serious moments, just like with the first film, I thought were definitely very well executed. Now, the only problems I did have with Dead Man's Chest personally is just that, like I said with Naomi Harris, you know, she only has a couple of scenes, but there's one scene where she gives the crew like this entire exposition that I didn't really care for. The film does does drag a little bit because this is a little bit longer than the Curse of Black Pearl. It's not like it drags a ton. It's not like, oh my god, this is really dragging. But just a little bit, I did feel the running time drag. I also did find it weird how Jack Sparrow, we see him have some kind of escape plan when the movie opens and then all of a sudden he's the leader of the tribe. There are a couple of things that happened in this film that felt out of nowhere to me. That was one of them. And the other one is Elizabeth. Even though I really did like her as the pirate lord, I will say how she goes from being that damsel in distress to all of a sudden being this pirate lord and now serving for Jack Sparrow, that felt out of nowhere too. But then, you know, after that sudden change, it did get better for me. And I do think that the little romantic bits with Elizabeth and Jack Sparrow, they weren't really necessary to me. It didn't really take me out of the moment too much, but I did find them to be a bit unnecessary. Overall, you guys, Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is what I want in a Pirates of the Caribbean sequel. Fun, adventure, excitement. Yes, this is a little bit darker, particularly in the first half. The first half is definitely a little more darker, and then the second half starts to become a little more lighthearted and fun. But even when the film did get a little dark, I still found that aspect of the film to be very, very compelling. I still love the characters. I still love the score. Gore Verbinski's direction is just as superb as the original film. And yeah, it's just a really awesome sequel. It's a very worthy installment and I'm gonna give Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest three out of four stars. And now you guys, Kevin Folk is going to be giving his review for Dead Man's Chest. So Kevin, take it away. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and as you guys can tell, I am on 22 Tiger Dudes channel, and uh, if you guys don't know really what's going on, basically I'll explain, over on my channel, I have this series called Own It Never Falking Senior Reviews, and it's essentially what you guys think, where I review movies that I've owned for several years that I've never seen, and one of those films that we're doing, or one of those collab reviews that we're doing, I should say, um, is for the Pirates of the Caribbean series over on my channel. We review the first one, and now on Tony's channel, we're going to review the 2006 sequel, that being Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. This was a movie that I was definitely really looking forward to, especially after coming off the heels of the first one. Just such an entertaining, fun film that really had a little something for everyone, and after watching Dead Man's Chest, I have to say that while I don't think this is as good as the first movie, it still is a very fun, entertaining film that really does heighten the tension um, like the first one did, and really has a lot of things I really did love, um, but like I said, I already explained the plot, so let's just jump right into Dead Man's Chest, starting off with the acting. And just like the acting, the performances in this movie are really, really great. There's a lot more people this time. Like, there's a lot more people to talk about. But let's first talk about Johnny Depp here as Captain Jack Sparrow. Again, what an iconic role. Uh, there's really not much you can say here. The first one, he was uh, definitely a big part of the film. You know, he was just this really fun guy who isn't exactly making the best choices and is exactly the most, um, you know, nice of characters. And he's kind of, you know, fixate on this 
one thing, but he was just so damn likable. He was so charismatic to watch, and here, he is definitely the main character. The first one, I'd argue Elizabeth was. No, here, definitely, Jack Sparrow is the main character, and Johnny Depp still does a really good job. I will admit, I do think he's overused a little bit in this movie. There are some scenes that just go on a little bit too long with him, but he definitely does do a good job of what he's in. You know, he chews up a lot of the scenery, and he's just a really likable guy, and in this movie, you're really kind of feeling bad for him, I have to say, because of what happened to him in the first movie. You can understand why he has to pay um, his debt to Davy Jones. You can understand why he has to do this, but at the same time, you don't want this to have to happen to him. You want to be able to continue to escape, and I really did like the way they did that with his character. That was just a lot of fun here. They really do give him a lot more to do here, and I thought overall, he definitely honestly did step it up from the first movie. I really loved him in the first one, and here, he absolutely steals this entire film. He was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I really did love what he brought to the table here. Captain Jack Sparrow, really, like I said, he really deserved to be the mascot of the series. He really does, um... It was a big reason why when people think of Johnny Depp, they think of this role. It's just so iconic, and Johnny Depp just kills every second of uh, when he's on screen. He was fantastic. Now, the big thing with this film that a lot of people, I'm sure, were surprised about is that they actually did bring back Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley for this film. Let's first talk about uh, Keira Knightley in this movie, because like I said, I think she is the main character of the first movie, and here she still does play a very vital role. I still really love what she had to do here, and I do think she needed to be brought back for this movie. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, there was no reason to do that. They could have easily, you know, just not had them because their story was over. <sighs> I would argue that that's not the case at all. I mean, they are just as responsible for a lot of what happened to Jack as Jack himself is. I mean, they are the ones who let him escape execution, and she still does see the good in him. And there's a lot more between Elizabeth and Jack in this movie, and I thought their interplay was really very well done, especially when we get to this really nice subplot involving them, uh, because a lot of this movie, Jack and Elizabeth are away from Will, and they have a lot more time together, and I thought they worked very well um, in this movie. I will admit I don't think Elizabeth had as compelling of an arc as she did in the first movie, but I still thought Keira Knightley did an incredible job. I really did love what she had to do here, and uh, as a character, you just, you care about her character way too much to get bored when she's on screen. Because of how great they presented in the first movie, she's just as great here, and I really did love what she had to do. And then, of course, Orlando Bloom as Will Turner, I would argue, has more to do in this movie. Like I said, a lot of this movie, he is away from Jack and Elizabeth. He is on this other ship with Davy Jones, and uh, there's a really compelling arc of this character that I don't really want to spoil, but I really did love uh, how much he became more confident in this movie, and how much ass he really got to kick, because he really does get to kick a lot of ass, but he also ends up in a lot of sword fights and things like that, and I really do love how he kind of does become that pirate. I really did love what he had to do here. I thought he was fantastic in this movie, and uh, again, he was just a really, really entertaining character, a really likable guy, and I really did love what he had to do here. He was absolutely fantastic. However, just like the first one, you really can't talk about this movie without talking about its villain. Bill Nighy as Davy Jones absolutely kills it, and I would argue is better than Barboza. Barboza, I love in the first movie, like I said. I think he stole most of that movie, uh, but here, Davy Jones is just such a vindictive, such a determined villain who will do anything he can to really get Jack Sparrow's heart. I mean, he has this deal with Jack. He wants to make sure this deal works out as best as he can. And the, just the darkness of this character, they really didn't hold back. I mean, there are some things that he did in this movie that I'm honestly shocked they got away with. This, particularly one scene... Um, involving a direction with Will, I was very surprised that they actually did that with this movie, but it makes sense. I mean, Davy Jones is this very powerful, you know, creature, and he will get what he wants, and he will make sure that he get what he wants, and I really love the vindictive side of him. He really was fantastic here. I think Bill Nye, he really did an incredible job, and it really was believable. Like, this really did feel like Davy Jones, and you can really understand why he was so insistent on what he wanted. I thought, overall, he really did an incredible job. Now, as for the other performance in the film, there is one character they brought back here that I really thought was unnecessary. For some reason, Jack Davenport's character, Norrington, comes back, and I really liked him in the first one. I thought he had a really solid arc. I thought they did a really good job of at first having him be really against pirates, but then kind of becoming loyal. Here, he is actually Jack's servant, and while I thought it was a good progression with his character, I didn't necessarily find him to be a huge part of the story. I didn't really think he needed to be there. Sure, 
he's just as responsible as Elizabeth and Will, but I didn't really feel like he really needed to be as in much of this movie as he needed to be, particularly in the second half. He has a lot more to do, and I just didn't really feel like he was all that necessary. I like his acting. I think Jack Davenport does a really good job what he had. I just didn't really find him to be that necessary. Who I also really did love, though, was Stellan Sarsgaard, uh, which I don't want to spoil the role he had because it actually is a huge spoiler, um, but where they went with this character was great. I thought they did a really great job because of how much they set it up in the first movie. Um, I really did love the connection that he had to this character in this movie. I thought it worked really well, and they took a character that could have easily just been the throwaway sidekick to Davy Jones, and they made him a lot more, and it definitely makes me very intrigued to see where they end up going with that character uh, in the third film. So overall, guys, I'd argue that the caster is even better this time. I think they all had even better chemistry here, and I was very impressed with what we really did get out um, out of everyone when it comes to the acting. But now let's get to the directing here, because once again, Gore Verbrinski really does does prove that he is the man when it comes to the series. He really knows what he's doing, and here he really stepped it up in every single way, I have to say. I mean, the directing here, it's twice as funny, it's twice as dark, and it's definitely, especially the latter, it is a lot darker, and I'm glad Gore Verbrinski decided to go there. He decided to take the story in a darker direction, and it really does make a lot of sense. Again, after what Jack has done, you can really did get the sense that dark stuff was coming, and you can understand why he decided to channel uh, that darkness throughout the film. This is really one of the films that doesn't hold back like he shows a lot of things that again i can't believe they got away with in a disney film but it made a lot of sense why he wanted to go there um as far as the laughs, though, I think the laughs are still great. There are still some really hilarious moments in this movie that I absolutely loved. Uh, a lot of great um, banter between characters, especially when Will and Norrington are on screen. That stuff is absolutely hilarious. There's some great stuff between Jack and Elizabeth as well. It's very funny. And, of course, basically anything that comes out of Jack's mouth is always uh, a riot to watch. I think that's always very funny. But I will admit that there are some things in this film that do feel a bit forced. It seemed like because of how funny the first one was, this one... Gorbachev was just going a little bit more, not cartoony, but some stuff was a little bit more over the top. There's a lot more slapstick in this movie, and I thought it worked. Like, a lot of it does work, but there is definitely a large portion of it that doesn't work, and that does lead me to the screenplay. The screenplay in general, I definitely really did love. I found the main story of Dead Man's Chest and him having to pay his debt to Davy Jones, I found that really fascinating, honestly, and just like the first one, uh, I didn't say this, but I know Tony did. The way they explain, um... The Dead Man's Chest in this movie is just really fascinating. It really does help you to understand what's going on. I've heard a lot of people say this movie's very confusing, and I really didn't get that sense. I pretty much knew what was going on throughout most of this movie. I was intrigued on where the story was headed, and I thought for the for you know, for the most part, it was definitely very well done. And like I said, a lot of this movie, these three are split apart, and I thought it was definitely a smart decision to do. You know, uh, most of the movie, Elizabeth and Will had a lot of chemistry, so the choice to divide them and give them scenes with characters that they didn't have as much screen time with, because, you know, Elizabeth shared most of her time with Barboza in the first movie, Will spent most of his time with Jack in the first movie, so to, uh, to tear from that and actually be the opposite, I thought made a lot of sense to do that. However, I will admit that there definitely are some tedious choices within this film. The film is very long, um, and it doesn't exactly feel long, but there are some sections of the film that go on for a little too long, particularly a, a subplot in the... Uh, second half of the film involving Jack and these Indians, I just didn't find it to be that necessary. It seemed like it was just kind of there. It was just there just to be this silly thing, and I, I just didn't really understand what the point of it really was. I don't really know why it needed to be there. Sure, you could have maybe spend 10 minutes on it, but they spent almost 40 minutes of the movie on it, and I really didn't find it to be all that necessary, to be honest with you. Um... Once the three of them got split up, that's when I really started to get into this movie. That's when I thought this movie really did get good. It did take a little while for this movie to get going. The first, like, 20 minutes, I was really into. And then after that, I think the movie did go, did drag on just a little bit. But I thought once they actually did get split up, that's when I really did get into this movie. And from there, I really was uh, enjoying myself. I thought it was definitely a lot of fun. Um... But like I said, for the most part, the screenplay I thought was definitely very well done. I like the direction that they went with the story. There's one choice they decide to make towards the end of this movie that I really found to be unnecessary. It's sort of like this love triangle of sorts that the movie starts to develop, and I really hope they don't do 
anything with that in the third movie. I, I just don't think it's necessary at all. I think it's dumb, and I think it just adds a lot of drama to a film that already has so much drama going on. We just don't really need it. I don't really feel it's all that necessary, to be honest with you. Um, the cinematography here, once again, is absolutely phenomenal. You can really tell the budget that Disney really had, and that's something that I really don't feel gets praised enough, is the cinematography in this movie. I mean, it, it's game-changing, and really, especially for 2006, this is some of the best you could see of that time. And a lot of people always say, oh, Avatar, Avatar, Avatar. This movie... Uh, I think tops that, really. I mean, the, the cinematography here is just fantastic. I love the way cinematography is constructed. Just the look of Davy Jones in general. Uh, this is one of those movies where I was pausing scenes, and I was just so mesmerized by everything that was going on. Uh, the costumes look amazing. The designs look amazing. The designs of the ship are fantastic. There's a lot more places they go within this movie, because the first movie, they were on the ship, basically, throughout the entire film. This one, they go outside the ship a lot, and... Uh, <laughs> I thought that definitely did help the film. It's just a very vibrant film, and uh, it's fantastic to look at. You know, these were some of the most expensive movies made at the time. In fact, the third one, once I get to it, is actually, at the time, the most expensive film ever made. You can definitely get the sense that they definitely did put a lot of effort into it. I was very impressed with the way the cinematography turned out here. Again, the score is just great. The booming score throughout this film. There's also a really good score for Davy Jones that I definitely really did love. Uh, but, you know, that da 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 never gets old. Uh, just always puts me in a great mood, and uh, it just always gets me so hyped. It always gets me so into the film, and really, once you play that score, that's when I know I'm watching a great Pirates movie, and I thought that worked perfectly. I really did love the score throughout this film. Uh, and like I said, the editing. This movie is significantly longer than the first one, and yes, I do think some portions go on just a bit too long. There are some things that I think could have easily been cut, particularly in the first half of the movie. There are just some things that go on a little bit too long. Um... But, this is definitely a bigger story than the first one. It's not as simple as the first one. But I don't think it could have been. I think it needed to be a more complex story. And I'm fine that it did go in some more complex direction. I don't think it had, like, 500 subplots like everyone thinks it does. I think, overall, it is definitely a little bit more, um focus than I expected it to be, because a lot of people say, oh, it's not focused. Well, I really did see it to be focused. It focused a lot on Davy Jones, and yes, there are large portions of the film where it's not doing that, but I thought for the most part, that was definitely very well done. The movie also does an excellent job of saying the third one, like, once this movie's over, if you guys don't know, this movie actually does end on a cliffhanger, because they shot the second and the third one back to back, and once this movie's over, I mean, I am, have never been more hyped for the third one uh, since the ending of this movie. The ending of this movie is absolutely fantastic. I love the direction they went with it, but either way, guys, Dead Man's Chest is a fantastic sequel, in my opinion. I really did love what we got out of this film. I thought they had some really great interplay between the characters. It stepped up the action. Which, let me just say, the action scenes in this movie are fantastic. They're extremely well choreographed, particularly one on this wheel. I have no idea how they choreographed that the way they did, honestly. It's such a dangerous scene, and not a second of it do you feel like these characters, you know, you feel like they're in danger, obviously, but not a second of it feels like this was, uh, stage. It feels so natural in the moment, and I don't know how they got it done as well as they did, but it really did impress me, and again, it really did keep me in the film. None of the action scenes here felt too long. Just like the first one, they felt like they were all necessary. They needed to be as long as they were, and uh, I thought they were all really great. They really kept you in the moment, and I was very impressed with the way the action scenes really turned out. Overall, guys, I really did love Dead Man's Chest. I'm definitely going to give Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest a 4.5 out of 5 or an A-. minus. So over, guys, for my portion of the Pirates of the Caribbean interviews, let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Have seen it, loved your thoughts on it. And again, big thanks to 22 Tiger Dude, who will be here for every single one of these reviews. Look forward to the third movie at World's End on my channel. Okay, bye. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing Parts of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Well, you guys, that is our Dead Man's Chest review. We will be reviewing Parts of the Caribbean at World's End. It is going to be on Kevin Falk's channel, so be sure to keep a lookout for that review. And you guys, of course, if you want to check out Kevin Falk's channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. So, everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!